What's up guys? It's been a hot minute since I've been on Facebook Live. Oh my gosh, how are you guys? Uh, thank you so much. For those of you, I'm sure most of you are gonna catch the replay. So thank you very much for tuning in. Um, if you are new to my videos, I'd love to know that too. So just type in if this is the first time you're catching my, one of my videos, let me know. Um, and drop a comment if you are on watching so I can see that you're on and that you are here. Um, if you've ever wondered like what sets certain people apart like why do some people seem to always sail through their business ranks have no problems at all they show up on social media like they're doing everything right like have you ever wondered why some people seem to like always no matter what business they're in no matter what the, it's it's like that people who everything they touch turns to gold have you ever heard of those kinds of people um, so I'd love to give you, we are actually, um, my team and a few of us are doing a book club. Um, I'm sharing this into a couple of our groups too. So if you're in our groups and if you happen to share it out to your timeline or to your pages or to your groups, let me know. Um, it's, uh, it's always fun to see you guys share these because hopefully, I mean, the reason I do these videos is because when I learn something personally, I want to reteach it. It does a couple of things. First of all, I think that if you learn something and then you reteach it, it helps you, like it helps it sink in, right? And I also feel like, I feel like it's doing people a disservice. Like I feel like as the human race, we are at the top of the food chain. <laughs> we are survivors. We are designed to, when we learn something, I feel like we all can do better. When we learn something and we reteach it to somebody else, us as a people we can help everybody elevate and honestly like if the whole like if the gene pool <laughs> kind of like up levels a little bit in their either their personal development or um just their general attitude or stuff like that i feel like don't you feel like we'll all rise i feel like as uh, what is that quote like as the tide rises all boats rise right so thank you guys so much for sharing hey deb thank you for sharing um i saw somebody else say that they shared deb thank you for watching oh my gosh okay so if you guys do happen to share my video comment below and let me know i want to give you a shout out i'm sharing it into a couple groups just really quick so i want to actually talk to you guys um about five things we're doing in a book club right now. We're um, we're taking a we're doing a book club on um, Eat That Frog. Y'all ever read that book? The book is kind of gross. The title is gross, and honestly, like I was sharing in our um, <laughs> I was sharing on the Zoom on the book club today. It's like I see some people posting on social media. Oh, I ate a frog today, and I bet like some of you guys that aren't in our book club are probably wondering what in the heck. Are these people talking about like they're eating frogs um so really quick let me share this out it's having like technical difficulties okay um so i'm gonna share there are five things that i know that there are leaders do all the time no matter what and this is like any industry this is not just network marketing this is leaders in general this is leaders in your community um in your family all of that there are five certain things that they do all the time no matter what without fail i will tell you like as i share these five things with you these are things that people had to work on okay this does not come easy this does not come naturally at all so the book that we're reading in our book club right now and um, we're halfway through <clears throat> you're welcome to join them by the way they're literally for anybody network marketing entrepreneurs it does not matter hey chelsea how are you um it doesn't matter what you're in what you're doing if you're an entrepreneur if you're in network marketing and it's totally generic we don't mention company names we don't mention product names or anything like that you're all welcome it's free the only thing you're buying is like your own book um but right now we're doing a book club on brian tracy's eat that frog and we're halfway through and i've read this book like a few times before but we we gave everybody the homework assignment to um get the workbook so like we're going through literally chapter by chapter and this book the the chapters are really quick reads like these are it'll take you less than 10 minutes to read each chapter right so we're basically reading a chapter a day and then we're filling out the little pieces in the workbook and so as we were going through, we were doing, today we're doing chapters eight through 14. And I kind of picked five things that I really had to share with you guys. Cause again, like I said in the beginning, I feel like if you learn something, you should want to reteach it to other people. One for yourself, 
because it'll help you like make it all sink in and like click in your brain but it also it helps other people like if you're learning something that's up leveling you you really should want to reteach it because everybody can help everybody win right so there are five things that i feel like everybody who's a leader does without fail okay and this should go fairly quickly i'm going to give them to you guys really quick all right the first one is that leaders always look for the good now i know that a lot of you have probably heard that before um and i think in network marketing especially in, in a lot of this like i grew my whole network marketing business everything that i do is online i used to do home parties like in direct sales i used to do home parties um for like pampered chef and stuff like that and um three or four times a week, I would do home parties and have to leave and all that kind of stuff. And I feel like, you know, when I was doing home parties or for those of you who work, you know, in a traditional job where you're going to an, to an office, it's almost like in that sort of an environment, it's not, it's, you still deal with this, but you're sort of able to separate work from your life, right? So, um, for example, like if you leave your office at five o'clock, you're usually able to leave work at work. <laughs> Okay, if you're, if you're doing home parties, you're able to go do the party, go do your thing, and then when you come home, you're done. You're done with the party, right? You're able to like clock out or check out. When your business is all on social media, you're always um, faced with opportunities to become derailed, right? So what I've noticed that leaders do is that they're always looking for the good. So like think of a time in your life when something has gone terribly wrong, like totally out of your control, or maybe it wasn't your control, but just something really worked out terrible. Um, it could be trauma, it could be a bad business deal, it could be like your company went under, um, you lost a good friend, maybe somebody mistreated you, some, some kind of situation where something went terribly wrong, okay? Then what, you have two choices when something like that happens. The average person will look at that situation and, and just sink their teeth into it and just dwell on it and they'll chew on it and they'll keep revisiting it and they'll keep reliving it and they'll keep, in their mind, they'll keep going back and working out how could it have been different? What could I have done? How come she did that? How come he did that? Why did the company do this? Why didn't the product do that? And like all this different stuff, right? They keep reliving it, they keep staying there. What leaders do is they always look for the good in that situation. So like, think about it. Think about the most terrible thing that's happened to you in your life and your business and your finances, whatever, in your relationships. Think about the most terrible thing that's ever happened to you and think of something good that came out of it. I'm not being funny, like it's for real. Think of something good that came out of it. Leaders can do this really quickly. Hey, Michelle. So leaders can literally, Zig Ziglar used to call it flipping the script. Okay, like it was, or like a plot twist, right? So literally when you're, when you're in a situation like that, the faster you can do this, it, it comes with repetition. It comes with consistency. Like the, honestly, the more bad things that have happened to you and the more that you are able to stop, flip the script, what is the message in this mess? What is the testimony from this test? What good can come out of this? What good came out of that past situation, right? Leaders always look for the good. They always believe that everything has a lesson. So number two is seek the lesson and the setback. Something that I really love that Brian Tracy says in this book is he said, you have two choices when you're faced with a setback. You can use it as an obstruction towards your goal, or you can use it as instruction on how to achieve your goal. I thought that was so good, don't you guys? So. You can literally use those situations as, oh, that's why, that's why I failed. That's why my team crumbled. That's why the business shut down. That's why my marriage failed. That's why this, that's why that. You can use it as an obstruction. Or you can flip the script. You can use it as instruction on how to achieve your goal. This, all, this happened already. Now I know. Now I'm coming at my goal still with experience. Right? So I loved that. I was like, oh, that's so good. So I like grabbed onto that one. Number three is leaders look for the solution to every problem. You probably know some people who look for the problem in every situation, right? <laughs> there are those types of people where it's like, 
you call them or you say something on your social media and your Facebook group or to your team page or whatever, and you're like, yay, this awesome promo, this blah, 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 whatever, right? And then there's always that one person who's like, but this, 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 and this, <laughs> they're always like, there's just those people. They find the icky part of the whole grand thing. Like they find the problem to something awesome. Leaders look for the solution to every problem. So um, my husband was in the Marine Corps and he always used to say, if you're going to present a problem, like if you're going to point something out, there's nothing wrong with pointing out like a situation or a challenge or a problem. It's, Hello, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're gonna do that, you better come with a solution too. Come up with an idea. Come up with a potential solution to the thing that you don't like. So I'll give you an example. In my network marketing team, um, we needed systems. We needed duplication, okay? I'm a top enroller. I can recruit. I've been a top recruiter at every company I've ever been to. I've enrolled 1,500 people on Facebook alone. Like, I'm a top recruiter. I'm very good at recruiting. However, that's not, like, not everybody does that, right? So our team, we needed duplication. We needed systems. We needed processes. We need, we need I needed a recipe for people to follow, <laughs> right? I had two choices. I could blame the company, blame my upline, how come they don't have this? Why isn't this already done? How come this is so hard? How come nobody's doing that? How, you know, all this stuff. Or I could say, if I could wave a magic wand to make this fly, what do people need? So I created it. Like I created a group, I created a system, I created a funnel, I created like literally a recipe. So like if somebody can actually read a cookbook and follow a recipe, they can have success. Newsflash, not everybody does though. Not everybody will, right? You can, you could literally lay it out for somebody and they still won't do it. That's just human nature. But I knew that people who really wanted it, but they simply just needed to have like a bridge to get from point A to point B, I knew how to build the bridge. So I built it. So I found the problem, but I created a solution. So leaders always look for solutions to every problem that they have, okay? Number four. This is a big one, and this is gonna be some tough love for some of you, um, but leaders always talk about the future versus the past. It is really easy to sit there and dwell on, well, my last company, well, my other sponsor, well, in my previous business, well, my last boss, well, my last boyfriend, my previous marriage, right? I used to be friends with her, but, all those kinds of things. Leaders focus on the future. Leaders use past experiences as lessons and blessings and they thank them and they bless them and release them and then they use those as experiences to move forward towards their goals, to get excited about the future. They're always talking about, oh my gosh, I have experience with that but I'm so excited for this. I'm really looking forward to this because I'm so excited about this relationship because I'm excited to lock arms with this team because not because my last company was this and my last sponsor was that and my last team was this is not it's because the positives what are you excited about about your current venture about your current company about the product that you have about your home about your relationship what are you excited about that without mentioning the past leaders focus on the future not the past and side note this one is a pretty big one I posted this a couple days ago on Facebook and a lot of you guys loved it. Surround yourself, like on this same, the same note, okay? Surround yourself with people who talk about their goals way more than they talk gossip. This is a big one, especially on social media. It is really easy to get derailed and to fall into this trap of talking about other people, what other people are doing, what another company is doing, someone else's comp plan, someone else's sideline, someone moved to another company, you know, this product is doing that. And it's really easy to look in the lane next to you, right? Surround yourself with people who talk about things that are gonna move you closer to your goals, right? Versus, getting caught up in gossip and stuff that has nothing to do with your own business, has nothing to do with you or your goals. In fact, it's costing you. You know why? Because every second that you spend around someone, listening to someone, gossip and drama and this is going on and that person said this and did you see that they did that and all this kind of stuff, every second that you do that, and every second that you draw someone else into that, you're spending time. 
And time is not like money. People who say time is money, uh uh-uh. Time, money you can get back. Money is abundant. Money, you can make more. You can multiply it. (laughs) But gossip costs you time. And time, you can never get back. Time, you can never get back. It's, It's literally limited. You only have a certain amount of seconds. Thank you, Carol. I <laughs> love my makeup. Um, so literally, stop wasting time on stuff that does not get you closer to your goals. If your goal is to have a better relationship with your spouse, stop wasting time on stuff that does not increase your relationship with your spouse. If your goal is to grow your business, stop wasting time on things that are not growing your business. If you want a clean house, stop wasting time scrolling Instagram and watching people's stories that have nothing to do with getting you closer to your goals. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Number five is control your thoughts and flip the script. Now this is, um, I mentioned that Zig Ziglar always used to say like flip the script. This is something like controlling your thoughts. And in the book club, I was trying to be funny. And I told, I told everybody in the book club, I said, listen, how many of you have pets? Do you guys have pets? Those of you who are watching this video, comment below if you have pets. So if you have pets, you probably give positive affirmations to your pets. Oh, you're such a good boy. You're so cute. You deserve a snack. Oh, good boy. Oh, yes, sit. Oh, good boy. Oh, shake. Oh, yes, you're such a good dog. You know, you went outside to go potty and you didn't go inside. Good dog, right? Oh, you're kitty cat. Yes, you no scratching the couch. Good job, kitty cat. You don't scratch the couch, right? You like literally give positive affirmations to your pets probably every day. If you have a pet, most likely a dog, you have probably given your dog some kind of positive affirmation today. When is the last time you gave yourself positive affirmation? Like a lot of us sit there and look at ourselves in the mirror. <laughs> yes. Yes, because seriously, like everybody does it. But I want to tell you, like how many times today have you looked at yourself in the mirror or thought to yourself, wow, Deb, you've done a really great job today. Like you crushed it today. You time blocked your time. You hit some of your goals. You really stayed on track. Even if you got derailed, but you still stayed on track for like 15 minutes. Great job today. You did really great today. Way better than yesterday. Oh my gosh. You're so good at this, Deb. And you're so good at this. Oh my gosh, you're really improving every single day. Way to go. How many times do you do that? Probably none. But how many times do you think to yourself, oh, you're just not very good at this. How come you can't get this down? How come you can never figure this out? Oh man, like you're just so slow when it comes to social media. Gosh, you just never can figure out all the technical stuff. You know, you haven't recruited anybody in 30 days and -and so-and-so has. I mean, how come they're doing that and you just never could seem to move the needle? It's so bad, you guys. I'm not, I mean, I'm not immune to it. Like, I'm aware of it and I think that's probably the first step. But how many times do you talk to yourself that if you overheard someone talking to your best friend in the way that you talk to yourself, what would you say to that person? You would probably say, stop talking to my friend that way. Like, I'll punch you right in the throat. Stop talking to my friend that way. You're being a bully. But you're being a bully to yourself, right? So leaders always positively affirm and speak life to yourself, to others. They control their thoughts. When they catch themselves, because you're human, you're a human being, when you catch yourself like getting derailed and spinning out and you catch yourself spinning into that cycle of woe is me, I'm not doing very well, I suck at this, I'm not very good at that, ugh, you know, like not doing very good at that today, I should probably just throw in the towel, like whatever, you catch yourself. The, The more you practice this, the more you train yourself to flip the script and control your thoughts, you will literally be able to identify it and be like, nope, stop that. You stop talking to her that way. And then you can literally flip it around and find the good. Wow, you're really improving at this. You're getting better at this every single day, okay? Control your thoughts. Here's the thing, like I know it sounds super woo-woo, but the way you talk to yourself is, your mind hears that. So every time you say something like that to yourself, you're asking for more of it. Do y'all know that? Every single time. 
So, like, I always used to tell our kids, our youngest is 20, our son is 22, um, our daughter's 20, and I always used to tell them, when, especially when they were littler and they were teenagers, you know, teenagers get, like, angst, right, the teenager, like, angst, and I always used to have to tell them, stop talking badly about yourself. You are listening to yourself. The more you say, I'm dumb, I'm ugly, I'm fat, like, I catch myself doing that all the time. Guess what? After a while, you'll start to believe yourself. And then guess what happens? You show up like that to the world. You start showing up dumb. You start showing up fat (laughs) and not confident. You start showing up like that. The more you tell yourself that, the more you start to believe it. So positive affirmations and controlling your thoughts. Here's the last thing. This is like bonus tip, okay? The last thing I'll leave with you guys is the thing that I've noticed and that I always work on improving Always. I think I'm really good at this part, um, but I'm always trying to improve this part. Hey, Brittany, is leading with love first, leading with integrity. The best leaders in the world um, have kind of like a giver's gain mentality, right? Where they're always leading with integrity in terms of if you're in sales, you're always looking for what's in it for the other person. How can I serve them? Leading with love. If you're leading a team, love them where they're at and lead them to where they want to go. That's a huge thing if you're a team leader. You've got to love people where they're at, but you have to lead them to where they want to go. They're looking to you to lead them to where they want to go. Therefore, you have to be able to lead yourself. But lead with love. Nobody wants to be led with an iron fist. No one. They want to be led with love. Even the big, gruff, burly, you know, men on your team, they want to be led with love. And I'm not talking like ooey gooey, squishy kind of love. I'm saying with integrity, with um, the giver's gain mentality. And here's a side note for you guys. People can totally tell when you're the type of person who your character, you want them to win even if you don't financially benefit from their winning. People can tell. Like, here's the thing. If you're in network marketing and someone joins your business, you're like, yeah, you're my new best friend. But if they they leave your business, how do you treat them? How do you, have you seen people treat people in a negative way just because they leave a company or go to something else? Like, dude, it's weird. Like if you worked at a bank and you were a branch manager at a bank and all of a sudden your coworker decides to become a branch manager at a different bank, you're still going to be friends with them if you were actually friends with them. You're not going to be like, oh, let's boycott that person because we don't financially benefit from them anymore and we should block them on Facebook and all this kind of stupid stuff. Like it's dumb, right? The best leaders I've ever seen are the ones who can say, they love them on their way in and they love them on their way out and they literally want them to win wherever they are even if they don't financially benefit from that person's win right so anyway i'm really enjoying this book club that was just like a small piece of it um if you want in we're we're finishing up um eat that frog with this book club the next one that we're doing that's immediately following um and starts in two weeks is going to be on the big leap by Gay Hendricks. Um, that book is amazeballs. Um, so we're doing that. It's totally free. It's open for anybody. So let me know. Just comment below if you want in the book club. I'll send you the link to um, get notified. There's a Facebook group and we do it on Zoom um, and they're recorded. So like if you're in another country, you'll be able to catch up and watch the replay and stuff. But they're just so good. And we're just pouring into, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're in network marketing, um, it's just a really great community because we're all kind of bouncing ideas off each other. We're going through the book together. We're going through the workbook on this one in particular together and um, people are having breakthroughs like left and right. It has been awesome. Um, It's not your like woo woo Oprah's book club kind of thing, like no offense to Oprah, but it's like really gonna help you grow your business, your personal life, your professional life, everything. So anyway, so those are some things that I learned in the book club. I just wanted to share it with you guys. If you found value in it, share it out. And again, if you're catching me for the first time, let me know, comment below just if you watch this and what you got from it. And if you do hit share, um, I think a lot of people need to know this stuff. If so, if people follow you on your timeline that love, you know, they want to up level, they want personal development, share this out because when you provide value, you're giving them something, givers gain. So give value and people will look to you 
as a leader, right? And as a resource. So share this out if you found it helpful into your groups or whatever, and let me know. And I'd love to say thank you. Hey, Sally, first time. Yay, catching me live. Okay, guys, I'm going to hop off of here and um, finish reading this. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye, y'all.